truly you are a wonderful Savior, a great and marvelous God that we worship. And this morning, Lord God, we come to you from the humble hearts of Zion's broken, Lord God. And we offer this, Lord, to you as a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of thanksgiving, Lord, a sacrifice of appreciation for all that you have done. CCF Mississauga, CCF uh, Toronto North, 
and we're including Montreal that was their uh, drive away from here, okay? So we're opening that for everyone to be able to, to register and join. So that's one day, okay? And that is for $60. Now that's only for, um, for snacks, okay? Just to cover the snacks, okay? So that's the 28th, that's a Saturday. Now, if, you're, if you don't have work, by all means, please register, okay? We'll be closing that also uh, for, for the 26th, is it until next week? That's a Sunday, okay? Pastor Peter will, will be the one speaking in our joint service, okay? And we're not gonna have it here. Okay, it's because it's going to be three satellites together with the CCFBR. We're going to do it in downtown, okay? And uh, that's on the 29th of September, that's 1.30 in the afternoon, okay? So if you come here and you don't find us here, it's not yet around you, okay? So I, my prayer, our prayer is that you be able to, to be excited in how God will use you in this part of uh, the world here in Canada, okay? And so we're going to hear from Pastor Peter that my prayer is that your hearts will be ready to accept God's word, okay? Can, can we just hold down our heads and let's pray before we watch the, the video. Lord Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, the freedom, Lord, that we can come together, we can worship God, we can worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for our brothers and sisters who are here with us, Lord. Our prayer is that you would speak to us, Lord, this morning, that even through video, Lord God, that you would open up our minds and our hearts, Lord, and that we can be focused not just in listening to what Pastor Peter is saying, but really, Lord God, our prayers that we will hear from you. That we will experience the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. That the power that is within us is greater than the one in the world. That the power is available, Lord God, in that work, Lord, in our lives. <clears throat> Father, we pray, Lord God, that, uh, that you would move, Lord, and allow us, Lord, to really be excited in how you're going to use us, Lord. How you are going to raise up leaders here in Sisya Mississauga for your glory and for your honor. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, all God's people will say, Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and watch the video. From my sister, Maria, our partner, just stay home. This is the not life for her. She didn't want to go. And I told my mother, I said, Honey, our children are young. So Ladies said, and gentlemen, can you whisper to your neighbor, what is God's mission for CCF and for your life? Tell them, what is God's mission? Here is God's mission. Quick reminder. Everybody, let's read together. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Together, ready, go. <laughs> go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You see, this week, Next week, it's Mission Month. We want to remind everybody of God's mission. What is God's mission for us, for CCF, according to this verse? You will raise your hand once, okay, once. I'm going to show you different verbs. And you tell me if that's the main verb of verses 19 and 20. Do you understand the primary verb? In a sentence construction, there is a primary verb and subordinate verbs. But... I want to test you. Test your knowledge of the Greek Bible. You will not notice that in the English version, but just guess. Right? How many of you say, how many of you will say the main verb is go? Raise your hand, go. Okay. All right. 
How many of you will say baptize? Walang baptize, huh? How many of you will say teach? Teach them everything. All right. The main verb. From now on, everywhere I go, people make the mistake. Just this week, I was in Cebu. You have leaders who make mistakes. They forgot the main verb. The main verb, everybody, is make disciples. One more time. Make disciples. How do you make disciples? As you go. How do you make disciples? You baptize them. How do you make disciples? You teach them. But the main verb is make disciples. What does it mean to make disciples? To help them become Christ-like. The whole purpose of discipleship is not just to help people believe in Jesus, but to make them like Jesus. That's discipleship. Many of us have believed in Jesus, but you are not becoming like Christ. What you lack is discipleship. So what is discipleship? Helping people become more and more like Christ. There are different kinds of disciples in this room today. I want to clarify what I said this morning. One is you are a growing disciple. You are growing. The other one, you are a mature disciple. What do I mean? Growing disciples, you, you have begun to follow Jesus. You want to follow him. There is nothing holding you back. You are growing. But as you follow Jesus, eventually, sooner or later, you will make disciples. Because the command is make disciples. The command is to teach, teach them to observe all that I commanded you. So to make disciples is not a suggestion. To make disciples is not an option. It is a command. What I'm saying is this. If you are a disciple of Jesus, sooner or later you will disciple others. Until you are discipling others, Listen to me now. Until you're discipling others, you are not yet a mature disciple. Are we clear? So how many of you today are discipling people, either your family, people under you, you have a group of men, women, you are discipling. Raise your hands. Higher. Higher, higher. Sooner or later, everybody in CCF must raise their hands because a mature disciple is somebody who will follow Jesus and obey his command. What is the command of Jesus? Make disciples. One more time, make disciples. So you and I have no excuses. You know I have no excuse. Because he not only tells you what to do, he gives you the power. Acts 1.8. What's the power? You will receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, that's your house, what, whatever is around you, Judea, your neighborhood, your office, Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. CCF, in obedience to God, has expanded all over the world. Believe it or not, we are basically, in many parts of the world, making disciples. I cannot even count the number of disciples we have today. Even in the Philippines, I cannot count because we just keep growing and growing all over the world because God has commanded us, everybody, make disciples. So how do you make disciples? I want to share with you how do you make disciples. The marks of a spirit-filled man. How do you make disciples in the power of the Holy Spirit? How do you do that? Three important words. The first word, priority. Say that with me. Priority. You have to prioritize God's will for your life. You have to prioritize God's will. Second important word, problems. When you begin to walk with Jesus, when you begin to follow Jesus, problems are inevitable. So don't be shocked when you have problems. Number three, persevere. Because there will be discouragement, but you got to persevere. And that's how you make disciples in the power of the Holy Spirit. How do you know somebody is walking in the Spirit? according to Acts 19. I'm just giving a portion of Acts 19 because last Sunday we talked about experiencing God's power to understand His Word, to live out the Christian life. But today, Acts 19, 
three important words that will pop out of Acts 19, verses 21 to the end. What are the three important words? Number one, priority. You must know your priority. Prioritize God's will. Number two, problems. Problems are inevitable. Don't be shocked. And number three, persevere. Let's begin. Acts 19, verse 21. <clears throat> begin. Everybody. After these things, we, after these things were finished, Paul purposed in the spirit to go to Jerusalem after he had passed through Macedonia, Achaia, saying, after I've been there, I must see Rome. Before I explain to you this verse, I want you to, I want you to notice something. After these things. What is these things? How do you know these things? So what are the verses before 21? What are the Bible verses before 21? Smart. 20. Before 21? 19. Yes? All right. Let's look at those verses. 18. For example, what happened? Many of those who had believed kept coming, confessing, disclosing their practices. In other words, God used the Apostle Paul to bring about repentance. Many people were coming to Christ. They were repenting like many of you. Do you realize last Sunday, literally thousands of you came. There were thousands asking for prayer and deliverance. And we had prayer up to 9.30 at night last Sunday because God is at work. And the Bible, praise God, praise God. And the Bible tells us what happened. Many of those who practice magic brought their books together and began burning them, willing to let go of your past. In the sight of everyone, they counted up the price of them, found 50,000 pieces of silver. As I said, this is a big amount of money. If you convert those money in terms of peso, assuming it's peso equivalent, 30 plus million. If you convert the dollar into silver, it's 300 plus million peso. In other words, this is a big amount of money. People were giving it up. Why? Everybody read. So the louder. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. What happened? Was growing mightily and prevailing. You will notice something. Wherever God's word is preached, if people put priorities on God's word plus God's spirit, the result is transformation. That's what happened. Now, you will think the Apostle Paul will take a vacation. He did not want to take a vacation because, number one, he prioritizes God's mission, God's purpose. After these things were finished, Paul purposed in the spirit to go to Jerusalem, Macedonia, Achaia. And then, after that, I must go to Rome. Now, think about it. Why will Paul go to these places? Because it was God's will. Friends, there are two kinds of people in this room today. Listen very well. Number one, to those who care about God's will, God's mission. That's your priority. Or another group of people, you don't care about God's will. It's about your will. Two kinds of lives, two kinds of people in this room. Number one, you prioritize God's will. Or it's your will. You don't care about God's will. Two lives, two endings. God's will versus your will. If you do it your will, you will end with regrets, sadness. If you follow God's will, how will you end? You will end your life with no regrets, with fulfillment, with joy. Two endings and two destiny. What are the two destinies? If you follow God's will, at the end of your life, you'll be with him. And you will tell the Lord, praise God, your will be done. You tell God, that is your life. God's will be done. If you do it your way, you end up in hell. And in hell, you will hear God say, your will be done. Two kinds of people. Someday you see God. Thy will be done. 
It's all about God's will. Or God telling you, your will be done. So today, let me ask you, is it about your will or God's will? Two kinds of people in this room. I suggest, through the power of God's Spirit, you surrender your will. Say, Lord, not my will, but your will. You will not pursue God's will until you know Him. The more you know God, the more you will pursue His will. You know why? You will know that God loves you. You will know that God is wiser than you, and you will know that His will is always better than your will. So until you really come to know Jesus, you will not pursue or prioritize God's will. In my life, I've come to a point where I am scared of my will. I don't want to do my will. I have been disciplined, spanked by the Lord so many times if I do it my way. So now I do not want my way. Remember Frank Sinatra? I did it my way, and now the end. Okay, that's okay. We don't have to keep singing. My friend, two ways to live your life. Your will, God's will. Which one are you? For the Apostle Paul, God's will.